We wanted to have the biggest battery that we could without spending a ton of money on it. Ultimately, we have a 24 volt, 560 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. So batteries, how do you talk about batteries and make it interesting? We wanted to make a video that was a little less technical, but still very informative. So hopefully you can gain something from our whole system. Maybe you just want to learn how we set up our electrical system for living on the road. We're Jordan and Megan, and we are converting our cargo trailer into a perpetual adventure machine. Previously on the build series, we finished the couch and the closet and we moved in. We planned on doing more of the finishing touches in Montana. We first ordered battery cells really early in 2020. We had no tracking information. And then six months later, they were like, we can't find your batteries. So they refunded our money. Long story short, we ordered our batteries for the second time. We had them shipped to Montana. Uh, they showed up in like a month. And we picked up our batteries there and we did our whole install up in Montana. But somehow... We didn't film building this at all. We have almost zero footage of actually putting all of our electronics together. So we're gonna do our best and gonna give you a tour of our electrical system. All I can really show you is what we have, not how we built it. So our batteries are located below our closet. Check it out. Ultimately we have a 24 volt 560 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. To create this, we connected 16 280 amp hour prismatic cells, which are located back here, into eight parallel pairs. Those pairs are then connected in series to increase our voltage to 24 volts. We chose to make our battery bank a little larger than most. We based the size of the bank on how long we wanted to go without sunlight. We calculated being able to go four or maybe five cloudy days without charging. We have the equivalent of almost 12 Battleborn batteries, which would cost about $12,000. But by building our own, we only spent about $1,600. We have eight 230 watt panels on the roof for a total of 1,840 watts. We have never seen the panels produce more than about 960 watts or 40 amps. This is typically due to either clouds, the angle of the sun, or the inefficiency of panels. Technically our solar setup is a little small for our battery bank. If our batteries are depleted, our solar panels will not fully charge them in a single day. This has not been an issue since we almost never use more than 20% of our batteries in a day. As is, the solar panels take up most of our roof and it wouldn't be easy to add more. The Electrodocus system makes charging our batteries from solar energy pretty simple. The electricity generated from the panels is sent through these wires into these devices from Electrodocus. These devices are called DSSR20s and they act as a switch to either allow power through to the batteries or to shut off when the batteries are full. If you decide you want to change your system, maybe you want to add solar panels or switch them to parallel. You don't have to spend hundreds of dollars on another BMS for another charge controller. You can just add more DSSR20 cubes to the Electrodocus system. Each cube can handle 20 amps and it is easy to add up to 30 cubes. Electricity then passes through this breaker and these two shunts. The shunts measure current passing through them. This shunt is reading the current coming from the solar panels, while this other shunt is reading the current going into or out of the battery depending on if they are actively charging or not. 
We haven't quite finished connecting this part, but one really neat capability of the DSSR-20s is the potential for what is called diversion. If the batteries are full and the sun is still shining, you can set up a diversion to switch and send electricity somewhere else. We would like to set it up to divert power to our water heater. This way we are storing excess electricity in the form of heat. So now that you have an idea of what goes on behind the scenes, now let's talk more about what we use that draws power from the batteries. When we use electricity, it flows from our batteries through the shunt to this fuse and this switch. This particular switch is a manual switch that will shut down our whole system. From the switch, electricity flows to this bus bar. This bus bar distributes or splits the electricity into our two major systems. One of the main systems we have from this bus bar is to our inverter. We have a 24 volt, 4000 watt Ames inverter charger. It converts the direct current produced from the sun or our batteries into alternating current we need to operate our appliances and some devices. Before we get to those devices though, power runs from the inverter through two breaker boxes. The main breaker box here has four circuits. One circuit is for the outlets in the living room, another for the kitchen, the third is for our appliances, and the last circuit is dedicated to our induction stovetop. We have a single small breaker box over here that is for the mini split air conditioner. The battery is a big enough bank that we can run the air conditioner for 29 hours straight without charging at all. We don't have any Things that draw too heavy, we can run the air conditioner, the freezer, stovetop, Instapot, all at the same time. So it's, it's definitely got a lot of available power to it. Returning to our positive bus bar, power goes through our Victron battery protect. If there is not enough power in the battery to run a load, this will prevent the battery from discharging too much and causing damage. Power flows from the battery protect into two 24 volt to 12 volt DC to DC converters, then continues into our fuse box. There are fuses for our internal and exterior lights, max air fan, bathroom fan, as well as two 12 volt plug outlets that we have in our kitchen and living room that allow us to plug in USB directly. We really can handle every load we have without issue, without having to worry about it. We installed a 30 amp plug on the outside of our trailer to have the option to plug into an outside power source. When we plug into shore power, the inverter charger will charge the batteries and allow any surplus power to pass through to our devices and appliances. When we are using shore power, we are limited by the breaker we are connected to. So we just have to be a little more cognizant of what we are using and when. Electrodocus components are very adaptable for DIY systems. They take care of solar charging and lithium battery monitoring. It is a really neat, very simple, inexpensive system that acts as a brains for our whole electrical system. This is our SBMS, or Solar Battery Management System. It is a unique system that functions a little different from your typical BMS or solar charge controller, but it does the job of both very well. It will show the voltage of the individual cells and includes a graph to easily compare them and check for voltage spikes. This is the screen we use every day. It shows the amount of power that the solar panels are producing. If that amount exceeds our load, it will show the path of charge into the batteries as green. If that amount is less than our load, it will show the path as a draw from the batteries as red. It also shows a percentage of how full the batteries are. There is also an overview screen for what state parts of the electrical system are in. It shows how much the solar panels have produced, what the load has been, how much the batteries have charged at least since the last reset of the Electrodocus. You can connect the Electrodocus SBMS into your Wi-Fi to be able to check your electrical system on your phone, tablet, or computer. We have not felt we need that feature as the touch screen is never more than six feet away. Lastly, we can monitor the temperature of the electrical system bay as well as the external temperature of the batteries. We have a sensor located on the floor of the battery compartment to make sure we don't charge the batteries if they drop below 36 degrees. 
The placement of our inverter works well to keep the batteries warm in cold temperatures. So now hopefully you have a little bit of an understanding of what goes into building an electrical system for living on the road. Thank you so much for watching. It did require a little more learning on our part. We needed to know how to hook up something like this with some kind of BMS so that it'll monitor each individual cell and not get anything out of balance. Thank you, Jordan, for not making me explain all this stuff because you know it goes right over my head. Trust me, guys, I had to ask him to explain it more than once just for this video, let alone to build it. Give us a like if you are enjoying what you see and subscribe if you haven't already. We'll link as many components as we can in the description below. If you have any specific questions, just leave them in the comments. Come with us on our perpetual adventure as we continue to create our tiny home on wheels.